Okay, everybody, so let's um, work through section 3-4. It's actually a pretty short section because we're not together. There's a, an activity that I usually do with um, reaction time and a whole formula, a new formula that we work through, but uh, since we're not together, this would take about half the class, so this should actually be a pretty short section. Uh, I was writing down just to make a little mental note of what was due, and I thought, oh, I probably should just share this with you at the video, and I'll put this on an announcement. So Monday, you have three things due. The P&Ls are pretty short to 3.4 and 3.6, and then your wow is due uh, by midnight. And then there's nothing due Wednesday, woohoo! And so then Friday you have this section, and it's it's an actually pretty easy OCE, so I don't think you'll have a lot of trouble with it. So that'll be due a week from today on the 24th. And then I just wanted you to mark your calendars. Test number three is gonna be May 1st, okay? So it's a Friday, mark your calendar, and then we'll have a little bit of new stuff to do the week after, maybe Monday and Wednesday, a little bit of Wednesday, and then we'll start reviewing for the final, okay? So anyway, that's what's due, and I'll put that up on Blackboard. So we already started talking about this section a little bit. I see that I've written some stuff down about breaking distance and the, the variables that impact breaking distance. And so we looked at this formula briefly, so what I want to do is I want you to turn, let's get an OCE question in. So flip your notes to page 354. This is an OCE question. This is question number three. Okay? So let's get this done. So it's important when you have a formula to understand what the variables represent and understand what their units are. So number three is asking us to dive into this formula that we looked at and just kind of review what each of the variables represent. Okay, so um, if you want to look back on page 352, that's where they're defined, but I'm just going to go over it a little bit slowly. Um, I did it, so let me find it, page 352. 354. So V naught, that, that little zero is read as V naught, is the initial velocity. It's how fast you were going right before you hit your brakes. And the key thing to remember that velocity is in feet per second. So if that's a question we'll look at one of these on the OCE that you have to be wary of because we typically think of speed as miles per hour so we'll practice with some dimensional analysis with that D is your braking distance okay isn't this nice we're getting an OCE question done first thing right out of the gate and that's going to be in feet G is what's called the road grade. And you remember I gave you an example, like um, if it said, I think what we did was, I don't remember, like if it says 4% grade, then you're going to put that as 0 0.04 or 4 over 100. And the units on the top and the bottom are both feet, but they cancel. So road grade doesn't have any units because originally it would be feet on the top, feet on the bottom, but since they cancel, there are no units for the, the steepness of the road. F is what's called the coefficient of friction. And it's a number that's going to be stuck between 0 and 1, okay? 1 being the best, there's lots of friction, so that's going to slow your um, car fast, so the braking distance will be slow. 0 means you've got like a wet road and bald tires is bad, really bad. And there is no units on this. Okay, and then G is acceleration due to gravity. Let 
okay? And its units are feet per second squared. And then what you just have to know that it's a constant. And it's always 32.2 feet per second squared, okay? So it's what's called a constant. So it says um, which variables represent a constant? It's gravity, G, okay? Now, I just want to talk a little bit briefly about why these variables are placed where they are in this formula. I want to look at the ones that variable, that are very, um, the velocity, the friction, and the slope, or the grade. Now, doesn't it make sense, let's talk about fractions. The bigger the numerator, the larger the fraction. Does that make sense? Like if I said, um, 5 over 2 compared to 15 over 2, this is a bigger number. This one's bigger because it has a larger numerator. So the bigger the velocity, the bigger the braking distance. Like the faster you're going when you hit the brake, the longer it's going to take you to stop. So the distance is going to be further. So it makes sense that, that that's upstairs. Now, why are the little f and the g downstairs? Okay, well, let's, let's talk about fractions, all right? So if we have, here, I'll write it over here. If I have 1 over 2, and I'm going to compare that to 1 over 32, what do you guys remember about fractions? Do you remember that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction, right? The bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Do you guys remember that? Okay, so when we talk about grade here, we're talking about numbers that are positive, okay? The grade in this case is going to be, if it's a positive, then you're going uphill, okay? So if G is positive, you are going uphill. So doesn't it make sense that the bigger the G, so if this is a really steep hill and you hit the brake and you're going uphill, that D's gonna be small. The bigger the G, the steeper the hill, the shorter the braking distance. Does that make sense? And so, same with the F. So, the bigger the F, Remember I said F of 1 means there's lots of friction. That means you have really good tires and the road is like the most perfect conditions. So the bigger the F, the smaller this whole number. So that will mean that your braking distance is shorter. Because if you have really good tires on a perfect concrete road, then you're going to be able to stop quicker so the distance will be shorter. So the bigger the F and the bigger the G, the shorter your braking distance. Okay? All right, so I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. So there we got um, part of that OCE question. You just have question C left, and we're going to end up doing D together in a minute. But okay, so let's come back and look at the problems. So I'm looking at now, I'm going to flip back. This was my OCE. I'm going to look back at, I can find it, here's 349, now I'm back on page 350, okay? Back on 350, you're going to need your calculator for sure, 
And so go ahead and look at number three. If you guys were in your groups, I would make you do these together right now. This is a pretty nice group activity. It says, let little f, the friction, so this it's pretty close to one, so that means you have a decent decent number of um, a decent tires and decent road conditions. And G is 0 0.05, so that's a 5% grade. Uh, and you're going uphill. So it says write a simplified formula for the braking distance. Okay, so let's get our formula written down here. Are you ready? All right, so D equals, we don't know velocity, so we're going to leave that in the problem. And then 2 times, now remember, little g is a constant. So that's 32.2 parentheses, and then we know f and g. So little f is 0.8 plus little g, 0 0.05. So when they say, you know, write a simplified, make it look a little cleaner, let's clean up that denominator, okay? So let's pull out our calculator and clean up that denominator a little bit. So we've got 2 times 32.2 parentheses 0 0.8 plus 0 0.05. All right, so one way you could write it is V squared over 54.74. That's one way. That's a nice, clean way to write it. Or, if you wanted, now, now this is only if you want, this is a lovely answer, I love it, um, but one of the answers uh, in uh, the online portal is this, but then another one says, okay, well, let's just put this fraction into your calculator, okay, because there's a one on the top, a one understood, so what's one divided by 54.74? Another answer that they have is 0 0.018, they, they go out to 268v not squared. So those are the two answers for that one. So distance equals v squared over 54.74 or d equals 0 0.018268 times v squared. Either one is lovely with for me. This one's a little bit a little bit odder to see, but there we go. So it says how can you verify your predictions about the relationship between velocity and braking distance? Okay, well, we said that we we thought that well, if we double the speed that the braking distance is definitely more right? You're going to take a lot longer to break, so the distance will be a lot further. But it says, how can you go about your predictions? Well, let's pick two speeds, let's double them, and then let's see what the two breaking distances are. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's try it. So how can you verify your predictions about the relationship between velocity and braking distance? Well, I'm, I don't know if the distance doubles, but I'm, we're going to figure it out. So let's pick, pick two speeds. Let's pick 30 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour. So if we double the speed and hit our brake, what's the distance? Does the distance get doubled? I know it's going to be more, but is it doubled? All right. So this is the thing, if this is on the final, that, that I worry about people missing. They're going to give you the speed in miles per hour. But the formula takes it in feet per second. So we've got to use our dimensional analysis, analysis to convert this to feet per second. Now on the final, they always give you this. They always will tell you one, one mile equals 5280 feet. Like they will always tell you that on the final, that you don't have to memorize that. All right, so if I want to get rid of miles and be left with feet, miles has to go on the bottom and feet have to go on the top, and then you would fill in the numbers. One mile 
is 5,280 feet. So look, now I have feet per hour. So now I've got to get it in feet per second. All right, well, I know I've got hours on the bottom. So if I put one hour on the top, then I know we've got 60 minutes. And then if I want to go for one minute, that's going to be 60 seconds. Let's see. So hours cancel, minutes cancel, and you see I have seconds on the bottom. So I'm just going to pop these four fractions in my calculator. Okay, so we've got 30 over 1 times 5280 over 1 times 1 over 60 times 1 over 60. All right, so this is going to be 44 feet per second. So this is what my velocity is. If it's 30 miles per hour, then we've got 44 feet per second. So let's figure out what my braking distance is. Okay, so if I'm going 44 feet per second, let's pop it into the formula. Let's just get this one in and see what happens. All right, so here's my formula. We'll look at you later. So distance equals, let's use this one because it just looks easier. 0 0.018268 times 44 squared. Point zero one eight two six eight times forty four squared. The squared button is the fourth one up. Do you see that? That's how you can square a number really quickly. So if you're going thirty miles per hour, you hit the brakes, you're gonna go about thirty five point four feet before you come to a complete stop. Are okay with that? Okay, so let's see what it is if we're going 60 miles per hour. So this is for 30 miles per hour. That's how long it's going to take us to come to a complete stop. All right, so I've got some scrap paper on the next page. I'm going to do over here. I'm going to do it on the scrap on page 351. Now we're going to concentrate on 60 miles per hour. So first thing, this is what I always worry about. First thing is we've got to convert that to feet per second. Okay? Oh, that's a kicker. All right. So 60 miles in one hour. So if I want to get rid of miles, I've got to put miles on the top or on the bottom. And what I want to be left with, which is in feet, that goes on the top. And then we'll fill it in. In one mile, we have 5,280 feet. Okay. So let's check it. Miles cancel, and I'm left with feet. All right. So let's just think about it. If there's 60 minutes in an hour, and then 60 seconds in each minute, does it make sense that one hour has 3,600 seconds? Does that make sense? So if I want to get rid of hours and be left with seconds, is it okay if we just go 1 over 3,600 and then the hours cancel? All right, here we go. Very exciting. 60 times 5280. Oh, here, I'll do my fraction. 60 over 1 times 5280 over 1 times 1 over 3600. So we've got a velocity of 88 feet per second. Now that makes sense. Right? Because if 30 miles per hour was 44 feet per second, then 60 miles per hour should, that makes sense that it's 88, right? It's double. But what about the distance? That's what we're interested in. Okay, here we go. You ready? 
So let's write our new and improved version of this formula. 0 0.01826 velocity squared. All right, 0 0.018, oops, I think there's an I'm eight I'm missing, 268 times 88 feet per second squared. All right, I haven't done this, so I don't know what's going to happen. So did you guys get 141 0.5 feet. Alright, so did it double? If we doubled the speed, did the distance get doubled? Oh, it, way more than that. It definitely more. So how many times larger is this distance compared to this distance, right? How many times larger, you put the big number on the top, little number on the bottom, 141.5 divided by 35.4, one, here, I'll do it again, 141.5 divided by 35.4, we round that, it's four times larger. So if you double your speed and you hit the brakes, it's going to take you four times the distance if you're going faster than if you're going slower. Something big. That's big. That's something big to think about. All right. So believe it or not, that's pretty much it to this section only because we cannot do the further application. We can't do the ruler drop to test your, um, to test your reaction time. All right, so let's take the extra little bit of time then and play with some of the OCE questions. Mm -hmm. So number one, uber easy. Cross off number two as always. All right, number one's actually easy. I think I actually said it out loud um, when using variables. Oh, let's do it. When using variables, I think this was how I started the, the video. It's important to know what the variables represent and what units should be used with them. Huh, that's so funny. I said that at the beginning, so that should be an easy one. Look at that, we just did two problems. Boom, out of the way. All right, we, so we did A and B together. All right, so I think you can handle C, but I want to do D only because in order to do four, you have to get 3D right. So usually in class, I have everyone work in groups until they get it right, and then they can go ahead and do number four. But since we're not together, which makes me so sad, um, we're gonna, we'll work through this together, okay? So then you won't have any trouble with this guy, all right? So let's, let's look at this one. Let's do it. So for question letter D on number four, you'll notice, and this is what I worry about on the final, if they give you something in miles per hour with this formula, you got to convert it to feet per second because this formula only works if it's in feet per second. So 72 miles. For one hour. Why don't you pause the video and just look back in your notes and go ahead and figure out what that would be in feet per second. So on the final, if you see this, you'll be golden making that conversion. Okay? So give it a try. Like turn off the video and at least try getting it into oh here it says convert V not um, into feet per second. G is already in feet per second, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so I want to get rid of miles and be left with feet. That's what you want to be left with goes on the top. So we already know in one mile there's 5280 feet. And we just talked about this since hours is on the bottom. And I want seconds on the bottom. 
in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. So let's put that into my calculator and figure out what the speed is in feet per second. Oh, ah, I forgot something. Hold on. Hello. Times 5280 over 1 times 1 over 3600. All right. So it looks like if you're going 72 miles per hour, you're going 105 and 6 tenths feet per second. All right. So let's pull out our fancy schmancy formula and start filling stuff in. So the formula is velocity squared. So 105.6 squared all over. I'm looking back at the previous page. 2 times g, little g is 32.2 times uh, parentheses, little f, plus g. And so when you look over here, you're like, God, I don't, this doesn't match up with anything. All right, well, let's see what 105.6 squared is. 105.6, remember this, I said the squared key is the fourth key up. Do you see that? That nice little squared button. Aha, okay. So this is where they're getting the funky numerators here. So that doesn't have the cool numerator, so we can get rid of that one. So I know that can't be an answer. So it's either one, two, or three, only because of the numerators. So that's my velocity squared. Cool. All right, well, none of them have the two times 32.2, .2, so let's just go ahead and, and multiply that out. Two times 32.2. Ah, that's 64.4. Okay, so we've got 11,151.36. When I multiply 2 times 32.2, I got 64.4, parenthesis, F plus 0 0.02. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. Do you see any that look just like that? Now look where the parenthesis is. There's a parenthesis separating the 64.4 parenthesis F. Do you see any that have the 64.4 outside of a parenthesis? Nope, nope, nope. So they must have distributed through that 64.4. Okay, so we're going to take the 11,151.36 and then let's take the 64.4 and distribute it. So that would be 64.4F plus 64.4 times 0 0.02. 1.288. All right. Now we're at our next version of this. Does any of it match up with 1, 2, or 3 now? What do you see? You see it? Yep, I'm hoping you see it. I'm hoping you're all screaming out, Kathleen, it's option number three. All right, you know, I do these really late at night. If you can't tell, I get a little punchy. All right, so anyway, we've got D done. It's option three. Perfect. So now you should be able to come down here and work through this. So they said, okay, now what's going to happen as you have a a really bad friction, so that means the distance should be really big. That's terrible conditions to actually pretty decent conditions, all right? So all you're going to do is take each of these and pop it into number three. And I would use your, your, cal your the fraction can, your calculator, and just type it in exactly how you see it. So here, I'll do the first one with you. So 11151.36 one, one, I'm going to let you actually give you some time to pop that in there. Okay, and then on the bottom I have a parenthesis 
64.4 times my first F is 0.3 plus 1.288 parentheses. I, I typed it in exactly as you can see it here. So what do they want? It says round your solution to three decimal places. So 541.118 feet. That is um, a long distance, but you were going pretty fast, 72 miles per hour, but this is terrible conditions, right? You've got bad tires, bad conditions, like the, it's just bad, all right? Or you could say like, I don't know, halfway tires, but super icy, right? So anyway, so now you can finish this off and then you can rank them. So you shouldn't have any trouble with number four now, okay? You only have to do C for part three, okay? You can go ahead and finish that problem at the top. And then I just wanted to um, work through one of these problems for number five. So you have a question in the past um, on the final exam where they gave you a formula and they just asked you to be able to read the formula read what the letters describe and fill in a couple table values. It's actually a pretty easy question on the final. It's a lot of reading, which I think turns people off, but you guys have, I've never had anyone take all three hours for the final, so you have a ton of time. So let's read what the formula is dealing with banks and credit unions and mortgage companies. And if you get a loan, you have to pay the loan, the money back that you borrowed, and then you have to pay some interest off, right? Because you owe the bank something for lending the, their money to you. And so this formula is typically what's used to repay loans with an interest. So let's pretend, like, pretend this question's on the final. So we're gonna look at what each of these mean. So A is the total required to repay the loan. P is the amount borrowed, that's ca called the principal. R is your interest rate in a decimal form. And T is the time in years. So if you have six months, that would just be half of a year. So here we go. You're borrowing $5,000. So that's my P. And then this is going to be the interest rate. So they're going to charge us 4.25% for as long as we, you know, the agreement period. If I say I'm going to pay it off in one year, two years, three years, all right? Now you can use the percent key on your calculator, or you could say 4.25% is 0 0.0425, okay? So we have this table, and now we have to just fill the t value in and pull out our calculator. So if time t equals zero, well, that means I haven't taken the money yet. So they have $5,000 waiting to give to, oops, sorry about that, they have $5,000 waiting to give to me that I haven't taken it out yet, like zero times gone by. So four months is a third. So if I tell the bank I'm going to pay this off in four months, how much interest are they going to charge? So that's what you're going to put in your calculator. This right here, right, so you have to pay your 5000 back, and then this is the interest. This is the extra amount that they're going to tack on. Okay? So that's what that extra piece is. So let's figure it out. So 5000 plus 5000 times 4.25% if you don't have a percent symbol, then use the 0 0.0425 times one-third. 
So just make sure you get a number bigger than 5,000, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to owe them $5,070.83, right? Because I'm going to round it to the pennies, because believe me, the bank's going to want their pennies. All right, so now you do the rest of these. They reminded you that six months is a half of a year. This would be one year, three years, and six years. And you should see, right, that as time goes by, you have more interest that you're going to have to pay. So you can finish off B. I don't think that that will be too terrible. And then you can fiddle around a little bit with C. They say estimate the time to repay the loan uh, if you want the total payoff to be less than 7000 So you just play with some time values okay, to figure out <coughs> what C is. Okay, or you can actually just solve the equation if you want to set it up and solve an equation. <coughs> up to you on that one. And then number six is a review. <coughs> it's a review um, for finding percentage. So you remember the small number goes on the top, big number goes on the bottom, and don't forget to convert it to a percent. All right, so you have to be careful what the population is, right? So this says, what percent of three-year-olds? So we're not looking at everybody. We're just looking at the three-year-olds. So 10, 20, 38. So there's 38 total. <clears throat> so what percent of that 38 received full or partial subsidy? So a subsidy is if you have a lower income. It's a, there's a, it's a form of financial aid. Um, so that you can get some assistance to pay for daycare, okay? So what percent of three-year-olds received full or partial subsidy? <clears throat> so 17 plus 13, that would be 30 out of the 38. Remember, percent, small number goes on the top, big number goes on the bottom, and they want it as a percent. Do they <clears throat> tell us? Oh, right here, they always tell you. you got to look for it. Round to the nearest whole percent. <coughs> you don't want to get dinged on that, right? So that says a decimal, but remember you got to multiply 100 to get to the percent. So 78.95% is going to round to 79%. Okay? <coughs> there you go, now you can see it. I zoomed in a little bit too much. I can't change the zoom once I start... Uh, recording. Anyway, all right, so you should be able uh, to handle that. Go ahead and make sure you add up the columns and the rows for part A. So that's not too terrible. That's a review, and dun -dun -dun, this is a review. Do you remember we did taxes? So I don't think you'll have a lot of trouble with this. Just follow the lines. Um, just follow the chart. I don't think anyone ever had any trouble with those when we were doing them in class together. Okay? So that's it. That is what to do on, let's refer to the sheet. So this section, this OCE is not due until Friday, one week from today, the 24th. You've got nothing due on Wednesday, Yahoo. And then Monday or over this weekend, make sure you, these P&Ls are pretty short, they're pretty easy. Um, it really won't take it that long. Uh, work through the P&Ls and the oh wow, there's no wow in your, um, in Blackboard right now, and uh, let me tell you, <clears throat> I'm really starting to focus on potential final exam questions. So really work on these OWs. They're not that long, but every question that I put on there is modeled after old final exam questions. So we're getting ready. We're getting pumped for this final. You guys are going to crush it. Just start taking some you know, good time on these oh wows. And um, if you're missing any questions, you've got to go over them. Uh, because if you miss it now, I'm worried you're going to miss it when finals come around. All right? So let me know if you have any questions. I love it when you guys Zoom with me because I miss seeing everyone. I hope you have a good weekend. And, and absolutely Zoom me over the weekend if um, you have questions. Okay? We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.